You know, you could at least try to look busy, you know. <laughs> I'm like standing right here. <laughs> yeah. Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Nuis and Sock. Welcome back from more Grand Theft Auto V Online. We're back in our bunker. Our too much bunker. Let's have a drink. We're going to do a gun running sale. Yeah, we haven't done too many of the gun running uh, uh, am, arms and ammunition sales. Uh, product sales. Mainly because I've been just researching and just recently I finished all the research. That's why there's no more stuff going on over here. So, thankfully I finished all the research a little while ago. It'd be nice if they gave you something for that, but they don't. <laughs> I guess just one less option. Yep. Bought ourselves a living quarters in here too. So I can spawn in to do these sales. So as we covered in our uh, how to make money in a bunker, um, you can see the value, value in the bottom right corner. I've got 140,000 right now. And that's basically what you get from a fully upgraded bunker and uh, one supply uh, being bought. So when you go into the computer, like we're gonna do right now, and you order supplies, it costs 75,000. And then you get 140 in value. Now you get more than that, I think it's 210,000 when we sell to the city. So that's basically how it works, cost 75, you get 210 I believe, we'll double check that in a second, um, when you sell it to the city. Okay, now uh, for those of you, uh, if you remember from our episode of how to make money, if you let that value stay under 175,000, it should give you only one vehicle for solo sales. Okay, so it's a good way to run the, the bunker sales all by yourself. It uh, makes the same amount of profit. There's no penalty or or uh, bonus, so it makes the same amount of money. And for a lot of people, it's the right level because uh, 175,000 in value or less, and that way you, as a solo player, you can get one vehicle, and away you go and do it yourself. Now that said, I should throw in there that I've also learned um, um, through trial and error that when you're with other friends, other players, uh, it can give you the harder sales, unfortunately. So even though your value is low, it can give you more than one vehicle. So unfortunately, you might want to think about that and maybe do it all by yourself and not have a friend help you. Because unfortunately, if you have a friend help you or if you have somebody else with you, it might give you the other missions where you get two or more vehicles, right? So if you have three friends, it might give you three vehicles. If you have two friends, it might give you two vehicles, which is kind of a shame because you could be selling just a tiny amount and it might give you two vehicles to do it with, which is kind of silly and the harder missions too. So, and, and to me, if I was going to uh, go through that, I would rather be selling the higher amounts, the value of the higher amount, if I'm going to go do those kinds of missions. So doing it this way under the 175,000, you may want to be uh, alone and doing it solo. Or if you do it with friends, now you know why sometimes you might get um, more than one vehicle because it seems to, like the other players seem to negate that value thing. All right, well, let's sit down. So before we do the sale, well, yeah, other people had left. There was people here probably be people join in no big deal so before we do that sell uh, we're going to order supplies so I'd recommend you guys do the same thing so you do the uh, before you do your sell you can resupply it there we go and now supplies are on the way before we do our sell now for those of you who may want to top it right out completely you can do one supply mission by yourself and get one like one player's worth of supplies if I did a steel supply mission a steel resupply mission and basically that gives you about $28,000 worth of extra. So that should put your total amount to about 168,000 and still be under that 175. For those of you that want to maximize the most without going over into two vehicles, without going over that $175,000 uh, level. Okay, now I'm, I just kind of to keep it simple. So I just order one in, order a supply in and sell it later on and order one in and sell it later on and order one in and sell it later on. I find that's a little easier than worrying about the other things. But at the same time, running those uh, supplies does unlock the, uh, the missions that you can do to get better prices on the vehicle. So you might want to do a bunch of them anyway, here and there. All right, so let's sell to the city for 210,000 like we said, we were saying. Yay. So it's nice that there are bunkers, my, my bunkers uh, finally making money after all that research. That's a lot of time and effort. That's a lot of money. Do not like the way they did that. We're all business today. The guns are in an insurgent. Get it to the buyers and your job is done. All right. Yay. All right. So this is the insurgent sale. All right. Not sure if we covered that earlier or not. We probably did. So I've done this one a couple times now that I've done the solo mission and finished the research. Um, basically... It, yeah, unfortunately, as a solo player, nobody can drive the gun without stopping. So that's a bit of a shame. But the good side is that it's a fast vehicle, and it's very tough, and it can crash right through. 
Now, I've had many of these missions where nobody attacks me at all. And I've had other missions where there's been plenty of AI attackers, waves, that come at me. But usually I can easily drive by them and evade them and keep them behind me. And if I wanted to, I could always stop somewhere and kill them. Or even call in a, a backup vehicle, like a Kruma or something, if I wanted to, and, and do something about it that way. You can also, uh, if you listened to my advice and didn't have a friend help you to have one vehicle, they could always just help you as of their own um, company. Just make sure they don't hurt you by accident. But they could always help you as a, another player kind of thing, too. Yeah, so apparently I've got stars. Did I get stars? Huh. Not sure if I caused that somehow. I don't think so. Not sure. Game can be a little odd sometimes. But the new patches have definitely made it better, but it still can be glitchy. Let's get up here. So the mission might be giving me a star. I'm not sure, but it's kind of strange to give you a star. It usually gives you two or three if it's part of the mission. I could just call Lester. But I don't think we're uh, going to have to worry about it. Yep, there we go. So far it seems like this is the mission where nobody attacks us. So, nice and straightforward. You just have to watch out for other players. You only have a 15 minute timer, but in many ways that's plenty of time. You know, if I wanted, if I was a further away bunker, I'd just have to go a little faster just to be sure. Um, but it does give you enough time if you wanted to go around the far side of the city or anything like that to get around to the GPS. Remember, you don't have to follow that yellow line exactly where it tells you. Sometimes you're better to go around other players or other things. Or even to go other ways that you know are faster. Sometimes that GPS can send you in strange ways. Alright, so this is a little entrance way in here. I haven't been to this location yet. There we go. Did this little cutscene, which is blocked by a bush this time. <laughs> and that's that. Money made. And we don't even have to leave the area or anything. Alright, we delivered a weapon shipment. 210,000 more. Which is great, because we just bought our facility, so we need to get some money back. <laughs> Buy ourselves an Avenger. Alright. Yeah, I guess we'll call in our buzzard here. So guys, uh, we haven't covered many gun running sales. I thought I'd uh, add that to the list. And that would be a gun running sale by, uh, by uh, the uh, Heavy Insurgent pickup. Yeah, it's a great mission. Like I said, you can have attackers, and you can also have a clear run. Look at that. All deliveries received. Now let's just hope they know how to use them, right? <laughs> yeah. And like I said, if you do get attackers, I've, I've gone through a few times and not even stopped. I just kept going. And like we've talked about in other messages, uh, other missions in the past, uh, I might recap, it's sometimes good to actually have those guys behind you and when you are being attacked by the enemy waves. Um, because sometimes when they're behind you, you know, just far enough that they can't really get you, but close enough that they don't disappear, they don't despawn, sometimes that's a great plot spot because that way it'll actually keep the enemy waves from continuously spawning on you. Sometimes that one following you will keep the others from appearing and you can get through the whole mission with just this one guy following you way back there. Yeah. When it happens you'll know what I mean. So sometimes it's actually good to, uh, to have those back there when you run into it. But this one was the much better one with no AI attackers. Alright everybody, well we'll see you back soon for the next episode. I'm the Missing Sock. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. It's free, and it really helps us out. Alright, I think I'm going to go maybe check in on my MC businesses before they start raiding me and stuff. Get back into some Doomsday stuff. Make some money for an Avenger. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Nice day for money making. Oh, and in closing, the bunker is usually ready in about, uh, well, I should time it to be exact, but I would say it's only an hour or two. It's not very long at all. Although, obviously, it'd be nicer if it was faster, but I usually fit it in between other things like your CO car sales and all those other things you can do, and then go back and do that every now and again. And the bunker's always making money, which is kind of nice that way, when you're logged in anyway. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.